now let us look at uh, uh, another question something you know the flavor is uh, very different from that what we are looking so far so we want to count the number of uh, positive integers less than or equal to 300 that are divisible by at least one of two or three so it's a very simple question uh, any of you can do it in a, in a minute i believe so just uh, uh, try it yourself but here is answer so let us say that x is the number of uh, numbers uh, divisible by 2 and y is the number of numbers divisible by 3 right or x is the set of numbers divisible by 2 and y is the set of numbers divisible by 3 now uh, so one way uh, we can do is that like okay there is a, what is the cardinality of x well since every alternate number is divisible by 2 we have exactly 150 numbers and similarly every third number is divisible by 3 there are 100 numbers now the problem is that we cannot add x and y to get the total number of numbers divisible by 2 or 3 because there could be numbers which are appearing in both the sets right so x and y might have some intersection so we will be counting those numbers more than once so to avoid that we have to discard those numbers which are counted twice so what are the numbers which are counted twice those numbers which are both divisible by 2 and 3 that means they are the numbers divisible by 6 and how many are there well 300 by 6 which is 50 so now we can use uh, this property that since uh, we have we have the we have the the numbers that are divisible by 3 numbers that are divisible by uh, 2 are 150 their sum is 100 plus 150 250 but 50 of them are uh, you know common right they are divisible by both 2 and 3 so this is uh, let's say Uh, both divisible by th 2 and 3 they are the uh, ones divisible by 6 and therefore they these numbers that we have counted as part of x and as part of, as part of y so this means that we have to uh, we have counted them exactly twice so we can subtract that so i will get cardinality of x union y is 150 plus 100 minus 50 which is 200 now this is uh, something that all of you know already. Now, uh, can you prove uh, something similar when there are three uh, intersecting sets, like let's say A, B, and C, right? So the following theorem is a homework. Uh, a, B, C, B finite sets, then cardinality of A union B union C is cardinality of A plus cardinality of B plus cardinality of C minus cardinality of A intersection B minus cardinality of B intersection C minus cardinality of a intersection c plus cardinality of a intersection b intersection c because these numbers we had counted uh, two times each but we have dis uh, subtracted them more than that so therefore we want to put them back again so we, we cannot subtract more times than the number of times they were actually over counted so uh, as a homework prove the above lemma now we are going to prove a much more general formula for this uh, which is called a principle of inclusion and exclusion so what what does it mean we are including the numbers that we want to count first then the numbers that we are over counting we are excluding by subtracting again we are including the numbers which we have you know uh, subtracted too many times then again we are putting up the numbers that we have uh, added too many times etc So for this, uh, we need uh, the following conventions. So let X be uh, the universe. The universe means that the set where all the elements that we are going to talk about in the uh, other sets are going to come from. Right. So everything is appearing in this set X. So A1, A2, etc., A, N, B, a family of subsets of X. Okay. Now for any subset let's say i of the index set right so because a1 a2 etc are indexed by 1 to n so take the index set 1 to n and then 
take any subset of the index set i. So we define a subscript capital I to be the intersection of all the AIs where the index I is in the set I. Okay. Now, what happens when uh, I is the empty set? Well, uh, by convention, we define a empty set to be the whole set and the universe X itself. Of course, in some books, where they follow a different convention, but for our purpose, we will use this convention. Uh, where, uh, uh, you know, the reason for the convention is uh, kind of clear that, uh, you know, when you take intersection of uh, sets, the sizes uh, only decrease. So, if you decrease the number of uh, sets, uh, you know, that we are intersecting to zero, then you should have more uh, only, right, the maximum possible. Uh, elements which is the universe itself. So therefore we define a empty set to be the universe x. Okay with this convention we can define uh, the theorem of principle of inclusion and exclusion. So let uh, a1 to a and b again a family of subsets of x then the number of elements of x which lie in none of the subsets ai is given by the uh, sum summation over all i subset of uh, the set 1 to n, the index set, minus 1 whole raised to cardinality of i, cardinality of a subscript i. Okay. So we are counting the elements which are not in any of the sets a1 to a. Okay. So we have the universe and we are counting the sets which does not belong to these sets. Now, it can easily be converted into counting the universe because we just take the uh, the whole set X and subtract, uh, you know, uh, these uh, elements that is in none of the things, then we will get the cardinality of the remaining things. So that is easy. So here is the proof. So how are we going to prove this? Okay. So we are going to prove this by, uh, by, uh, by counting the elements uh, in the set X, right, which are not part of the not, not part of the AIs, and see what are their contributions to the sum that we are looking at here. So we are we are we have a sum here, right? So take every element of X and see what is its contribution. Now, if you can show that in the sum the contribution of an X which is not in any of the AIs is exactly one. And for every element that appears in one of the AIs, the contribution is going to be exactly zero. Then the sum should give exactly the number of elements which are not in any of the AIs, right? So we are going to show precisely this by taking each element X and say that what is its contribution? So first we observe that the given sum is a linear combination of the cardinalities of sets AI with coefficients either plus or minus one. Now, if X, uh, you know, the element X does not belong to any of the sets A1 to AIN, then the only time in the sum, right, that we are looking at, where the, uh, the element x appears, right? Uh, it contributes uh, to is the empty set when i is equal to empty. Why is that? Because if i is not empty, then we are looking at uh, cardinalities of a i s, where a i is the intersection of the sets in which you know this indices, uh, you know, the, the element x is appearing, right? So therefore x must appear in one of the AIs to be part of any uh, term in the sum where when i is non-empty. So therefore, uh, you know, the only term in which x is not appearing in any of the AIs is when i is equal to the empty set. Now, when i is equal to empty set, what is the contribution? What is the contribution of x? when i is equal to empty set, right? The contribution of x is 
minus 1 whole raise to cardinality of i which is 0 right empty set cardinality is 0 so which is uh, minus 1 raised to 0 is 1 and cardinality of a i where a empty set is defined to be the whole set x right so the elements of x are all contributing 1 to the sum right and in particular the elements which are not part of a i's will contribute exactly 1 to the sum and since uh, the elements not in AI are not appearing in any of the other terms of the sums its contribution will be precisely 1 right so therefore if x is not in any of the sets AI then its contribution will be exactly 1 because it is minus 1 whole ratio 0 and cardinality of AI is uh, going to be the cardinality of x so each element contributes exactly 1. Now, now we look at the elements which appear in at least one of the AIs, right? So if I, uh, you know, x is appearing at least one of the AIs, you consider the set of indices i in which x is uh, appearing, right? So j to be the collection of the indices i such that x is in AI. Now this is a non-empty set because x appears in at least one of the sets. Now x belongs to a i precisely when i is a subset of j because by definition of j x is there in a i then that index is there in j right. So x belongs to a i precisely when i is a subset of j. So now the contribution of x to the sum right is summation over all i subset of j right minus 1 whole ratio cardinality of i cardinality of a i now this is for an arbitrary element x so j can be arbitrary right? but what is this sum right now cardinality of a i what is the cardinality of a i here right so you know how many times the element x is appearing in uh, in and so we, we you know instead of uh, you know we don't know the cardinality of ai so we are going to count uh, this in a different way right so what we are going to do is that for each element x how many times it is going to appear right so x is appearing in as part of every subset of ai right every subset ai of j right now how many uh, such uh, terms are there well we are looking at all possible uh, subsets of J, right? But in particular, we are looking at the uh, subsets of J with, let's say, a fixed cardinality. Okay? So instead of looking at every subset, I look, I collect all the subsets. I collect all the subsets I, which has cardinality exactly, let's say, small i. So what I am going to do is that I am going to uh, let uh, small i is equal to cardinality of i. And then I will collect, uh, you know, I rearrange the sum with respect to this cardinality of i, right? Now if I take uh, cardinality of j to be small j, then there are j choose i possible i element subsets of j right and each of the subset is going to be uh, contributing to the sum because x is in each of these guys right for every subset x is there right every subset of ai x is going to be there including the empty subset as because all the elements are there so therefore uh, by rewriting the sum as a sum over all i ranging to uh, 0 to uh, j where i is the cardinality of the set i i notice that you know in j choose i possible ways i can i can have uh, the set i with cardinality uh, small i so what is the contribution well because it is minus 1 whole ratio cardinality of i so therefore it is minus 1 whole ratio i now this is true for every i ranging from 0 to j 
and therefore uh, the summation can be written as summation i equal to 0 to j j choose i into minus 1 whole raise to i but now if you look at this summation clear uh, closely we will see that this summation is nothing but uh, summation i equal to 0 to j j choose i minus 1 whole raise to i times 1 raised to j minus uh, or, or j minus i okay 1 raised to j minus i again just add right times 1 raised to j minus i just to because it is just 1 right so this is basically a uh, binomial expansion right using the binomial theorem we see that this is basically the expansion of 1 minus 1 whole raised to j right 1 minus 1 whole raised to j is precisely summation i equal to 0 to j j choose i minus 1 raised to i and 1 raised to j minus i but 1 minus 1 is 0 therefore this total sum is going to be 0 but this total sum is the contribution of x to the sum where x is an element of one of the ais so any element in one of the AIs contributes exactly 0 to the sum. And as we showed before, every element not in uh, AI contributes exactly 1 to the sum. So therefore, this sum basically counts the number of elements that is not in one of the AIs. So that is the proof. Okay. Now, equivalently, Uh, if you want to count the cardinality of the union, right, a1, uh, a2, etc., an, we can uh, we can either you know take x and subtract uh, this uh, elements that are not there, or you can uh, write the formula in a different way, which is summation uh, i subset of one to n, i non-empty because you no know, that set we don't want, and then. Uh, minus 1 whole raised to i minus uh, 1 cardinality of i minus 1 because you know we are changing the sign right and cardinality of i so <laughs> this will give you the uh, the cardinality of uh, the union a1 to a n what is the proof let x be in exactly k sets a i where k is uh, greater than 0 the contribution of x to the sum is let us say m is equal to uh, summation j is equal to 1 to k minus 1 raised to j minus 1 k choose j right if because it appears in exactly k sets you know every j element subset of this k set right contribute something and that is going to be minus 1 raised to i cardinal to minus 1 so it's minus 1 raised to j minus 1 now that is the contribution now what you do you multiply both sides by minus 1 and add 1. Okay. So I'll get 1 minus m on the left side. And on the right side, I will have a plus 1. That plus 1 can be written as uh, minus 1 uh, raised to, uh, let's say, 0. Right? So therefore, I can I can now make the index from 0. And of, of course, because I multiplied by minus 1, so minus 1 raised to j minus 1 becomes minus 1 raised to j. So I take the summation again, summation j is equal to 0 to k, minus 1 raised to j, k choose j, which is 1 minus 1 whole raised to k, which is again 0, therefore m must be equal to 1. So the contribution of an element that is in one of the AIs is precisely 1. And uh, elements not in AI are not appearing because i is non empty, right? So therefore, uh, we have the uh, proof. So both are uh, you know versions of principle of uh, inclusion and exclusion, and uh, you can use uh, either of the formulas as you please. So now we are going to uh, use this to solve a couple of problems. So earlier we were looking at the surjections, right? So the surjections. Uh, from an n element set to a k element set. How many are there? So the number of subjections from an n element set to a k element set. Now I say is given by summation i is equal to 0 to k minus 1 whole ratio i k choose i k 
k minus i whole raised to n. Okay, so this is the formula that we have. So we want to prove this formula. So how will you prove this? Again, uh, if you want, you know what uh, result that you have to use, right? What uh, method that you have to use now, uh, inclusion, exclusion, and can you try to think of a proof of this formula by uh, this? So pause and think about this, and then you can continue. So here I am going to give a proof. So let x be the set of all functions from uh, an n element set 1 to n to the n element set 1 to k. So what is the cardinality of x? It is k raised to n because every possible functions are there. Every element has, uh, you know, like uh, n, 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 you know, uh, n possibilities, right? So each of the k elements can be mapped from any of the n elements on the previous set. So therefore, there is k raised to n such functions. So this is a set of all functions, right? Right. So so every so so if you if you look at the functions, you have k raised to n because we have uh, k possibilities for any of the n elements, right? Yeah, that's what we want to say, right? So every element can be mapped to any of the k. So therefore, k raised to n possibility. So this is a set of all functions, but we want the surjections. Now, what are surjections? Surjections are those functions where all the elements have a pre-image, right? So every element in the k element set has a pre-image. So to use uh, inclusion exclusion, let us define, so we can do it in two different ways. I am going to use the first theorem. So I want to exclude the guys that is not required. So I will define my sets AI to be the sets which are uh, the functions which are not surjections. And then I, I you know, I discard the non-subjective functions and then I will get the subjections, right? So let me define uh, the set of all uh, functions this way. Uh, so, take some a fixed element of the set 1 to k and say that, okay, let's say i and say that, okay, I look at all the functions which map from n to uh, 1 to k where i is not in its image. Therefore, it is not a subject, right? So, ai be the small ai be the set of functions f for which uh, i is not in the image of f. Now, <clears throat> f, of f, f of x can be any of the uh, elements other than i, right? So there are uh, k minus 1 such elements. So therefore, the number of such uh, possible functions which does not map to i is the cardinality of ai, that is k minus 1 whole ratio. There are k minus 1 elements, so therefore k minus 1 whole ratio. Now, similarly, if uh, Let's say AI, right, where I is the, uh, you know, capital I, has all the functions where uh, image of F intersection I is empty, then AI uh, has cardinality K minus cardinality of I whole raised to N. Because, again, if uh, a set of, you know, uh, elements are missing, right, some, you know, T elements are missing, right, then k minus t elements are available. So the functions can go from this thing to any of the k minus t elements. So therefore, uh, we have k minus cardinality of i whole raised to n. That is the possibility. So uh, we can also observe that a i is basically the intersection of all a i, a, a small i, right? Where i ranges, uh, i belongs to the set. Uh, I. So that is uh, something that you can observe. And therefore, we have all the necessary uh, requirements for applying the principle of inclusion and exclusion. So let us use it. Now, again, a function uh, in X is a subjection if and only if it is not in any of the AIs because we have now, you know, 
every possible uh, elements that i have taken right a1 to uh, 1 to a, ak contains all all of this uh, surjection which means any of the elements so therefore it contains all of them so by pr principle of inclusion and exclusion we have summation i subset of 1 to k minus 1 raised to cardinality of i k minus uh, cardinality of i whole raised to n right is the number of surjections now if I put uh, small i equal to cardinality of i, there are k choose i sets uh, i of cardinality precisely i. And therefore, using this observation, we can rewrite this summation as summation i equal to 0 to k minus 1 whole raised to i, k choose i, and k minus i whole raised to n because i is the cardinality of large i. And this is precisely what we wanted to prove, right? So summation i equal to 0 to k minus 1 whole ratio i k choose i into k minus i whole ratio i. That is the number of trajectory functions from an n element set to a k element set. A corollary to uh, this result is uh, that summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 raised to i n choose i n minus i whole ratio n is equal to n factorial. Why is that? Well, because uh, when you are looking at surjections from an n element set to an n element set, right, when k is equal to n, they can be thought of as permutation, right, a set from, uh, a, a, a surjection from a set to itself. So, therefore, uh, the number of permutations is precisely n factorial and therefore the number of surjections from a set to itself must also be n factorial. And this is the formula for the surjections from a set to itself and therefore this counts the uh, total number of permutations. Now we will uh, stop uh, with a final application uh, where you look at uh, a more interesting question. So we have a party and uh, in this party, let's say uh, n persons are attending the party. Okay, So n people are attending. All of them came uh, wearing hats. So everybody came with a hat. Now, when you enter the party hall, you, you know, there is a stand where you can keep your hat. So, you know, they keep their hats at the stand. Now, when the party is going on, something happened, you know, in a nearby place and there was some explosion sound. So, everybody uh, got scared. So, they decided that, okay, it's time to go home. So, they all decided to run out. So, they, while hurrying out, they picked up one hat and put it on their head and went. They did not even stop to look which hat it is. So, uh, you know, they picked up hats at random. Now the question is that what is the probability that nobody got their own hat? Right? Everybody got a hat that is, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, different uh, from theirs. So, to do this, we can again use principle of inclusion and exclusion okay, to find this probability. So, how do we do that? <clears throat> so, uh, what we observe is that see a person getting his his own care, uh, you know, his own hat uh, can be thought of as uh, a permutation where an element is fixed. Okay. So, a permutation where there is no fixed point means that nobody got their own hat. Such permutations have names that is called derangement. So, a derangement is a permutation where there is no fixed point that no element is mapped to itself. Now, let x be the set of all permutations and ai be the set of permutations that fixes the point i. Right? It's very similar to the previous one, so therefore I am uh, not spending too much time. So, let x be the set of permutations and ai the set of permutations fixing the point i. 
Now, cardinality of AI is n minus 1 factorial because it is a permutation of the n minus 1 set excluding the one element that we have fixed, right? Because every element can be permuted, this guy has to be going to itself. So, therefore, cardinality of AI is n minus 1 factorial. Now, what is cardinality of A big guy where big guy is the uh, as a subset of the indices 1 to n well if you decide to fix let us say t elements then the n minus t elements can be permuted those t elements cannot be done anything so therefore it is n minus cardinality of i factorial that many permutations are there so therefore by principle of inclusion and exclusion we get the result that summation i subset of 1 to n minus 1 whole ratio cardinality of i and minus cardinality of i factorial. But what is this? Well, summing in terms of the cardinalities of the index set, summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 raised to i n choose i because there is n choose i possible ways to select an i element uh, subset n minus i factorial. Now, if you look at n choose i, it has n minus i factorial appearing below. So therefore, I can cancel that out. And n factorial is common to all, so I can take that out. So that is n factorial into summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 whole ratio i by i factorial, right? Remaining from the n2 i. So this is the number of derangements. So n factorial into summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 ratio i by i factorial. But now we want to find the probability, right? So the probability that nobody gets the hat is the total number of derangements by the total number of permutations which is divided by n factorial. The probability is that summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 whole ratio i by i factorial. And if you remember your calculus, you will see that as n goes to infinity, this summation converges to 1 by e. Right. So the probability basically keeps, you know, as n increases, it, you know, increases and decreases, decreases and increases, etc right uh, but for eventually it converges to 1 by e at, at any point the the difference from 1 by e is close to 1 by uh, n plus 1 factorial right it's at most 1 by n plus 1 factorial that is something you can you can uh, verify so we are not a very small probability right Okay, so with this, uh, we will uh, wind up uh, the uh, the lectures uh, for uh, this week and uh, see you uh, next week with uh, some more interesting topics.